Hey everybody, so today we're going to take a look at using Max to control external synthesizers. You can certainly build synthesizers in Max. There's all the components using the tilde objects to build really interesting synthesizers, and we're going to do that. We're going to do a tutorial where you build a basic synthesizer, just so you get an idea of how that works. But if it's not something that you really want to invest a lot of time and energy into, uh, you don't have to, because there's so many great external synthesizers that you can use, hardware synthesizers, software synthesizers, and uh, Max is very good at controlling external devices. So we're going to look at the OBXD software synthesizer. There's a free version that's downloadable here uh, from discodsp.com slash obxd. Um, if you're going to use it for any kind of commercial work, professional work, you do need to buy a license, but for our purposes we can certainly work with the free version. So download that for your platform and install it. And it's going to install several different versions of the synthesizer. It's going to install a standalone software version that runs as an application. You'll find it in your applications folder. You can search for it just by typing obxd into your search box and it'll show up. Um, and you run it and it's a it's a self-contained piece of software. It's got its own menu and uh, you want to go to its audio MIDI settings make sure that it's sending to the output that you want, and make sure that uh, of its active MIDI inputs, at least from max one, is selected. It's fine to have them all selected too, but the only one we're going to be using in this tutorial is from max one. So it's going to install that version. It's also going to install a plug-in version that you can use inside any DAW, like Ableton or Logic. And I'm not going to look at that specifically in this tutorial, but you can certainly host the plug-in version of this synthesizer in your DAW and control it exactly the same way that you're controlling the standalone version. The reason why I'm going to do this tutorial with the standalone version is not all of you necessarily have uh, a DAW that you could install the plug-in version into, um, and the standalone version will work for anyone. So here's the synthesizer itself, and here's Max. And in Max, in order to control this, we can just start with a K-slider. And the K-slider has several modes. We can create an Atrui to access its modes. Unfortunately, we can't select mode from this pull-down menu, so we do need to send it the mo message ATTR mode. click the message box to send it, and now we can choose between its three modes. We'll start with touchscreen mode, uh, since that allows us to press and release keys. We'll switch modes later on. And all we need to do to get these notes out is the note out object. Double click the note out object, select from max one, which is the port that our synthesizer is listening on, and here we go. We're controlling this external software synthesizer from Max. So in the synthesizer, we see that there's lots of knobs and buttons. This is a virtual analog synthesizer, so it's emulating uh, a, an, a, an analog synthesizer where every aspect of the sound would be controlled from these knobs on the front panel. So there's no hidden uh, controls here. Every aspect of the sound you're hearing is a reflection of the configuration of these knobs. Now because this is software, there's a menu here where we can make new presets, import and export presets, etc., and choose between different programs. So there's a bunch of different programs uh, that we can select from that are pre-made for us, and there's 20 different banks of programs here. So for instance, right now we're in the arpeggio bank. If we switch to the bass bank, we'll see a whole different set of bass sounds. So this 99 bass. And you can explore all these different sounds, and then any change you make to the controls on the front panel will be immediately reflected in the sound. So if I switch to monophonic mode, I 
can interactively work with the sound. We can change which sound is selected by making a program change. In Max, that's the object PGMOUT program out. Again, double click in the locked patch. Make sure we're sending from max one. And as I change this number box, we'll see the configuration of the dials changes on the front panel here because I'm cycling through different sounds. So now I'm on sound number 12. If I go to the menu, I see that sound is called acidic bass two. And if we want to change between the different banks, that's a controller. That's CTLOUT32, controller number 32, will cycle us through the 20 banks. Again, selecting from max one and going up to bank seven, which is the lead synthesizer bank. And then we've got a whole bunch of lead synthesizer sounds in there. Any knob on the front panel here can also be controlled from Max. Those are all controllers. And if you want to know what controller is assigned to what knob, you can go to the manual, which is here under Help Manual. It's a detailed manual that tells you about what all the knobs do. And towards the end of the manual, here's all of the controller numbers. And the, the, unfortunately, the abbreviations are a little bit hard to read, and also the order of them is not particularly useful. But uh, for instance, here, controller number 74 is the filter cutoff. So if we do a controller, a control out 74, Stick a dial on that. We can see that we're controlling the filter cutoff from max. Now, if you do get a stuck note, which is very easy to do when you're in monophonic mode, um, you can use the all notes off controller, which on every synthesizer is going to be controller 123. Send 127 to controller 123. And if you have stuck notes, it will clear them. Another way within Max to avoid stuck notes is to put a flush. Before your note out. And when you bang that, it will clear any stuck notes. But it's good to have both of these in your patches if you're dealing with external synthesizers um, to be able to flush notes that are stuck in max, but also flush notes that might be stuck for some other reason in the synthesizer. And of course, you want to label everything and take good notes. I'm moving quickly here. You want to move much more slowly and deliberately as you study this material. Um, this is the filter cutoff. This is all notes off. This is bank change. This is program change.
and I've prepared a U menu that has all of the controllers that are understood by the OBXD that's available on the Discord where you can choose any of the knobs on the front panel here and control them remotely. Creating multiples of this would allow you to control many different parameters of the synthesizer remotely from Max. And of course, this is just the starting place. Uh, where you want to go from here is to build something around this, like, for instance, a simple sequencer. Copying this from the Discord. One limitation that might come to mind as you look at this is there's only one of these, so you can only um, play one sound at a time. And that's true, but it does allow you to select your MIDI channel. So I could say channel 1, and then this instance of the OBXD is listening on MIDI channel 1, so anything I send to channel 1, program out 1, Control out 32 1 is going to go to devices listening on MIDI channel 1. And you can open another instance of this synthesizer that's listening on a different channel. So you can have multiple different sounds. Now, unfortunately, on the Macintosh, it's hard to open multiple copies of the same piece of software. If you try to reopen OBXD, it's just going to take you back to the one that's already open. So you do need to go to the terminal and just type in a little command, which is open space minus n space minus a and then the name of the piece of software you want to run another copy of, and it will launch another copy of that software. Uh, this one is a different, has a different skin on it, um, but there, now they look the same. And this one I can assign to MIDI channel two, and now I can play these two synthesizers on different MIDI channels. Another thing um, you might be realizing is that when you have all these MIDI objects in your patch, it's irritating to have to go and click and select each one, particularly since you'd have to do that every time you close and reopen the patch. Um, so it's quite easy to use the MIDI info object to give you a menu of all the available MIDI destinations, and then use a simple send and receive to set all your MIDI objects to be sending to the correct device. So I select from max one here, and it sends to all of my MIDI objects the destination that I've chosen.
And that's a quick introduction to how to control an external synthesizer from Macs.